From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. It's me, Johnny. Marty? Yeah. How is he? All about the same. Dr. Morton just gave him another transfusion. Has he been able to say anything yet? He hasn't even been conscious. Why, Marty? Well, who's there with you? Joe Crayley and the city attorney. Look, Johnny, I've got to talk to you. Right away. All right. Go ahead and talk. No, not on the phone. All right, it's room 604, City Hospital. Come on over. Not with them there. Why don't you come meet me? Because Shorty Wells is the key to this whole case. If he's able to talk before he dies, I want to be here to listen. Suppose I tell you I'm ready to talk, Johnny. Are you telling me? I'm in an all-night lunchroom right across the street from the hospital. Can you come over here? All right, Marty. I'll gamble with you. Be there in five minutes. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Greensport, Missouri. To the Home Office Great Plains Guarantee Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the open town matter. Expense account, final page. I hung up the phone more puzzled than ever, and heaven knows the case had been puzzling from the start. Marty Blake, young widow of the murdered police chief, had been completely uncooperative and unwilling to talk. And now she was reversing her field. Why? Her house had burned to the ground earlier in the evening, and Shorty Wells, number one on the city attorney's wanted-for-murder list, had been found trapped in the flames. Maybe this had something to do with Marty's phone call. She'd been my number one suspect at first, since she stood to collect $50,000 as beneficiary of her husband's life insurance. But then the city attorney himself, Dave Sherman, had provided her with an airtight alibi, and I'd reluctantly let her off the hook. Now this. I didn't know what she was up to, and I couldn't afford not to find out. Something up, Dolly? Well, that was Marty Blake, Mr. Sherman. She's in a lunchroom across the street. She wants to see me. Oh, what about? She didn't say. Well, go ahead and talk to her if you want to, Johnny. I'll call you if Shorty starts to regain consciousness. All right, thanks, Joe. I'm sticking right here myself. This one I'm going to follow personally. Well, if you really want to break the rackets in this town, your answer is lying right there in that bed, Shorty Wells. I think you're right, if he's ever able to talk. And if your police laddies don't fall over their own feet again, the way they did on that gun business when Ed Blake was shot. That mistake was partly justified, Joe. It was the chief's own gun that was lying beside his body. It was natural to assume that he'd exchanged shots with a prowler. Yeah, but two days to realize he'd been shot with his own gun. All right, all right. They fouled up, I admit it. And the ones who aren't stupid are crooked. Every raid you try to pull has been tipped off in the I inside. know it, I know it. Even when Mayor Lyons brought in state police, the whole plan was tipped. Which you took great pleasure in pointing out in your news right, story. All right, you guys, look now. I'll leave you two to settle this. Stick on this guy like a leech. And if he shows any sign of coming to and talking, let me know right away, will you? Yeah, we'll call him. Yeah. I'll see you later. <laughs> Back here in the booth, Johnny. Right. Well, what's on your mind, Marty? Sit down, Johnny. Here, come on. Why not? Well? The waiter's in back if you'd like some coffee or something. No, thanks. Okay, now what is it? What is what? You had to talk to me right away. How I talk? Johnny, I'm not... Too hard to take, am I? No, no, you're a pink and gold doll. Wild honeysuckle and a handful of stars. At least that's what a couple of guys said today. I don't care what a couple of guys said. What do you say, Johnny? I guess the description fits, as far as looks are concerned. And if that's all you want to talk about... No, no, wait, Johnny. I I'm in the clear on this, you know that. The night my husband was killed, I've got an alibi nobody could shake, right? Well, I'm pretty well convinced you didn't pull the trigger, if that's what you mean. And you could convince the insurance company, too, couldn't you? If you would. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'd go pretty much in my report. 
But I don't well, see... Why don't we get this settled and over with? Why don't you be nice, Johnny? And turn in a real good report. Oh, so that's the pitch. Well, it's not a pitch. I didn't do it, so why can't you tell them so? Why don't we get some more answers first to a lot of questions? Explain a few odd angles, maybe. Like what? Like the fact that you heard the noise and woke up, that you sent your husband downstairs, that you turned on the light behind him and made him a perfect target for whoever held a gun. Johnny, like I... Like the fact that you filed your insurance claim less than 24 hours after your husband was killed. Suppose we hear what Shorty Wells has to say before I make any report. What if Shorty dies without talking? Well, in that case, I guess you will be in the clear. Because right now, he's the only lead I've got. Now, if you'll excuse me. Johnny, make that report. Make it now. Sorry. I'll give you $10,000 out of the insurance. Oh, you are anxious, aren't you? I just want to get it settled. Sit down, Johnny, and let's talk Johnny. about it. Yeah, Joe, what is it? Fireman I know just came by the hospital, Johnny. They found out why Shorty fired those shots just before he ran out of the blazing house. Why? That cellar door was padlocked on the outside. He had to shoot the lock off to get out. Then he probably didn't set the fire after all. Not if he was locked in the basement. What about that, Marty? Was he the one who was supposed to die in the fire? If he was hiding out in my cellar, I didn't know anything about it. Just another one of those odd angles, huh? Oh, stop it. Johnny, by the way, uh, what do you want to see me about? See you about? What do you mean? Well, yeah, you, the nurse said you phoned the hospital. Said you wanted me to meet you here. You mean you didn't? Come on, Joe, let's get back there. Sure, that's why she wanted me to meet her there, to get me away from that room. And somebody phoned and got you away. Elevator's coming down now, Johnny. Shorty's the one big threat to whoever's guilty. They know that if he talks, they're tagged. You get up to his room. Oh, I thought Mr. Sherman. Leaving? Well, yes. Somebody phoned. It's the mayor. He wants me to meet him across the street. Anybody up there with Shorty Wells? Well, the doctor will be back in a few moments. Come on, Sherman. Back oh, into the... Wait elevator. a minute. Look, I've got to meet Mayor Start Land. it up, Joe. Start right, it up. Sixth floor, number six. May I ask what's going on here? I haven't got time to go back upstairs. I told you... I'm afraid you you'll I... have to take time, Mr. Sherman. It was all right to leave, Dollar. Shorty wasn't showing any signs of coming to. Did you make sure of that? Did I... Look, Dollar, I, I don't get what all you're right, driving. All right. Come on now, let's go. Would somebody please let me in on this? Let's take a look at Shorty first, Mr. Sherman. Johnny, what happened to the cop who was on duty? Well, he was here in the hall when I left just a moment ago. Oh, he got to walk down to... Did you leave that door ajar, Mr. Sherman? Why, no, no, of course not. Come on, Wait. but quietly. What the devil? Are we interrupting something, Mayor Lyons? Oh, well, well, What's no, he doing I, with that pillow? Uh, nothing, nothing. I, I wasn't doing a thing. You but... were holding it down over Shorty's face. Get out of the way. I think you were trying... Shorty's dead. You smothered him with that pillow. No, no, he was he, he was dead when I came in. I was, I was just moving the pillow, Dave. Did you have to get us all out of this room and then send the police guard away just to move a pillow? Mr. Dollar, are you suggesting... Well, I'm I suggesting it for one. Dollar, I've been sure for months that Mayor Lyons was back of the rackets here, but I didn't have any way of proving it. Until now, perhaps. Until now, Mayor. Very well, don't move, any of you. Oh, now, wait a minute. That gun isn't really your answer, Mayor. There are three of us, you know. You can't get us all. Stay back, Dollar. Tell me something. Why did you have Ed Blake killed? Wasn't he one of your own boys? I can tell you why. Now, Ed Blake was going to pull out of the rackets, Dollar, and spill the whole setup to me. That was the reason for that fishing trip. Then it must have been Marty who tipped off May Alliance. Sure, sure, it figures. She loved that racket money that Ed was bringing home, and Shorty Wells was in town with a grudge against Ed already. Well, it was real convenient for you, wasn't it, Mayor? As a matter of fact, Dave, it was very convenient. Then Shorty hid out in the cellar of Marty's house until she decided things would be less complicated if she locked the cellar door and burned the house down. Marty was a weak link, you might say. She... Stay back, Dave. Oh, you better give me the gun now, Mayor. No! Get back! Do what he says, Mayor. You haven't a chance. I'm warning you, Dollar, if you try yeah, to... Yeah, I hear you. But I doubt if you can... Let go of it, Mayor. Drop that gun. Let go of it. No! Thanks. No, Look out, he's getting away. Lock the doors. You'll never stop me for a... Look out, that window. He tripped. That's six floors down. Yeah. Well, he got out of being prosecuted. As a matter of fact, 
There's nobody left to prosecute. You want to bet? She was still sitting there in the lunchroom across the street from the hospital. And she'd heard what had happened. I knew it the second Dave and I walked in from the half-smile of triumph on her face and from the way she greeted me. Too bad, Johnny. You should have taken my offer because I don't need your help now. Your company is going to have to pay off. I'm really in the clear now. You are, huh? And poor Dave, with nobody left to prosecute. He still has you, Marty. Accomplice to your husband's murder. Uh-uh, Johnny. Shorty died without talking. Mayor Lyons is dead. No witnesses, no case. Sorry, Marty. There is a witness. Oh? Who? You. What are you talking about? What's that paper? Well, you intended it to be an insurance claim. But actually, it's more of a confession. Signed and witnessed. What? You were over-anxious, Marty. And you filled it out in complete detail. It says, We found my husband's body at the foot of the stairs. That's right. That he'd been shot and killed with his own gun. Well, it's true, isn't it? That's what happened. Yeah. But this claim was in the main office of the insurance company less than 24 hours after your husband was killed. The police didn't find out he'd been shot with his own gun until two days later. Real neat confession, huh, Marty? Expense account item 12, $310.45. Incidentals in Greensport and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $516.20. End of account, end of report. Remarks? Marty Blake never was able to explain how she knew about that gun. She sure tried. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Before I do that, Please let me say thanks to all of you who are so kind about writing and telling us how much you like Johnny Dollar. It's a very gratifying experience. It's encouragement to all of us who are involved in production of the program. And, well, we appreciate your letters more than you know. As always, I'll try to answer you promptly, but sometimes the mail does pile up. In any event, thanks. Thanks very much for writing. Next week, a yacht that wasn't there and a man who wasn't there. They never were. But well, that's where I found them. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is written by Les Crutchfield and produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Gene Tatum, Paul Dubov, Joseph Kern, Stacey Harris, and Russell Thorson. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs>